So I am just here in Broadford on the Isle of Skye um, and I've just completed the Skye Trail. Um, I finished a day early so I've got a day off now and I've just come down to the beach. Um, I'm trying to give my body a break today um, but to be honest I'm a little bit bored so I thought I'd just do a video on my initial thoughts, reflections from the trail hopefully give you guys some useful information if you're thinking about doing it yourself. So it is now the 7th of June 2022 so I've done this I've done the trail at the beginning of June and from my experience I would definitely say this is a good time of year to do it. Um, obviously the weather in Scotland particularly sky is very hit and miss so you really do never know what you're going to get. Um, fortunately for me, I had exceptional weather. I can't really quite believe it, to be honest, but I had six days of glorious sunshine. So I would definitely say that if it is going to be good weather, June is going to be a good time of year to go because I think if you had good weather in July and August, it would probably be too hot, to be honest, because I certainly struggled at times with the heat. Um, I'd also say June is a good time of year as it's not too cold obviously. Um, it's just the beginning of summer so if you had good if you have good clear days um, you're gonna be nice and warm during the day and not too cold at night. Um, so I did the trail in six days I know most of the guides say seven. I definitely think it's possible to do it in six. This obviously depends on the kind of hiker you are. Um, but if you're like me and can pretty much do 20 kilometers a day, then yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be fine to do it in six if you want to. I think the reason that um, they all say to do it in seven is more geared towards the people that aren't going to be wild camping as all the days sort of end up you know in a town or by the road where you can get a bus to a town uh, but if you're wild camping like I was definitely six days is possible um, the trail is I think around 130 kilometers so you know you can you can do it in like 22 kilometers a day, something and do it in six days. Now I did the trail from north to south. Um, I see a lot of people that say it's better to do it south to north. And I feel like most people that I met along the way probably were doing it that way round um, because the north section is the most interesting section. You've got the Trottenish Ridge, you've got the Old Man of Store and the Kerrang. Um, so if you are one of those hikers that want to finish up with the more dramatic scenery, yes, that is probably the way to go. I did it north to south for a few reasons and they were first that if you do it north to south, you end up in a town. You can go straight to your hostel. You can get straight in a shower and get on a bed if you need to. I know that I'm usually a broken man by the end of my trips. So for me, it was nice to just finish in Broadford and be done. If you do it the other way around, you end up on a road in the middle of nowhere. You probably have to, well, you would have to wait for a bus to get back to a tree. Um, so I didn't really want to do that. And also, well, secondly, from my perspective, I find that usually towards the beginning of the trip, I've got more energy. I'm more, I'm more excited about the scenery that I'm gonna see. So, you know, my morale is high, my motivation is high. So I tend to find that I can, I can, you know, when it gets tough, I can really motivate myself to keep going. So that was part of the reason why I wanted to do, to do it like that. Um, because the last few days, 
are generally flatter. So if you start to get weary, like I know I do, after a few days of particularly wild camping, because I never, I never tend to sleep that well wild camping, um, it made more sense to do it that way. Um, and I'm glad that I did because towards the end I was really struggling so it was really nice to just be doing like walks that were just kind of hugging the coast on some like flat ground. Um, yeah. And the third reason, well I didn't really think of this beforehand but what I found on the trail was that the views ahead of me looking south were actually, I think, in my opinion, prettier than looking back behind me. And the reason for this is that obviously you're in the north of the UK, in the northern hemisphere, you're looking south, so you're looking sort of towards the sun. So there's more of a contrast uh, in the hills and the mountains. Um, so I generally think, generally think that the, the light is better. Every time I tended to look back, because the light is directly on the hills, it just looked a bit flat. That's not to say it didn't look dramatic, obviously it did, but I don't know, the scenery ahead of me was always incredible. And this isn't really something that I thought about or planned. Um, it's just something that I sort of discovered on the way. So again, I'm glad I did it that way around. Wild camping. Um, yes, if you want to wild camp, I definitely recommend it. Um, you will not find it difficult at all to find places to wild camp. Um, the only place I really struggled was on the Trottenish Ridge. That's main, I mean uh, there were there were places with flat ground that I could have camped but I didn't really want to be like right on top of the ridge mainly because it can get a bit windy up there. Um, so I wanted a bit of shelter and I don't like it when the sun comes up at like four in the morning and I get woken up super early. So I wanted a bit of shelter so I I did come down down a bit from where I was at the time and because I was on a bit of a slope I found it a little bit tricky to find somewhere but you know generally I don't think you'll find it difficult at all. Um, in terms of supplies, so I I took about three days of food and I don't think you need to take any more than that. So there is a outdoor shop in Portree called Inside Out, which has gas. It has the dehydrated meals that I usually eat, which are great. Um, and it has all sorts of other outdoor equipment if you need to. But I, in terms of food, I just packed for the three days and restocked in Portree. It also has a co-op there, which, you know, you can, wasn't the best, uh, well, well, it wasn't the biggest shop in the world, but you know, you can get things like obviously biscuits and nuts and things. Um, and then water on the trail, so there were points where it was a little bit tricky to get water. Obviously one of them was the Trottenish Ridge. So I took like a camel pack. Generally I fill that up in the evening so I can use it for my cooking. Um, but I don't tend to carry it during, well I don't tell it, tend to fill it up during the day with water and carry that because it's too heavy. Apart from when I did the Trottenish Ridge because I was aware that there probably wouldn't be much water. and. That was the case. Although there were sort of little pools of water um, at the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the hills, uh, which were pretty brown, but you could probably drink them if you have a filter. Another point where I found that there wasn't much water was the, the third section from the store to back to Portree. In fact, I found that it had less water than the ridge and no one had really warned me about this. So if you're going, do think about that. I went for a long time without water, probably like three hours or something 
I was on my last dregs of water, just trying to desperately make it back to Portree. So, um, yeah, definitely think about that. Um, in fact, that whole section, to be honest, was a lot harder than um, I thought about, to be honest. Everyone mentions the Trottenish Ridge, but no one had really talked about that bit. I expected it to be a nice, casually walk back to Portree, but it really wasn't. It was, it was another ridge with a lot of ups and downs. So just be aware of that. Yeah, I think that's it, really. Just to summarize, I think it's an absolutely fantastic trail. I would definitely highly recommend it. Um, incredibly beautiful, some incredibly dramatic scenery. And, you know, not too busy. You know, it's a relatively unknown trail at the moment. So it's not an official route, so it's not way marked or anything. So if you are gonna go, I do recommend that you do your research. Um, what I did was I, I downloaded some offline maps so you can get them from, I think it was the Highlands website. Well, I'll put a link, put a link in the description, but I downloaded some GPX files, which I used as an offline map. And then I took a map, which another sky trail map, which I bought from Amazon. I'll also put the link for that in the description. So both of those together really, really helped. And I would definitely recommend doing one or the other or both because there are definitely sections where there's not really a trail at all. You're just walking through um, swampy, boggy, marshy land. Um, and you definitely sort of, you get, you get lost, not lost, because a lot of it is just kind of hugging coastline or following the valley. But there were many times where I was almost definitely not actually on the trail. I would have been close by, but yeah. Um, so I think it's important to have that. It also just makes it a, a lot more interesting to know what you're walking through, what you're seeing. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. It's an incredible trail. And as I said, not too busy, um, you know. I think the thing that I find sometimes with these trails is that you're passing you're passing people every five minutes and you're not getting that kind of solitude well as much as you want whereas I think this had like the right balance you know I was passing enough people to know that I was not lost and you know I could chat to people every now and then but I also had moments where you know I didn't see anyone for an hour or something and I could just really enjoy the walk and appreciate where I was. So at the moment anyway, definitely a walk I would recommend. So I think that's it for this video. If you did enjoy this, it'd be great to hear what you think or if you've got any questions feel free to pop them below and if you find it any of it useful please do let me know so that's it and uh, please let me know if you do the trail hope you do all right bye